Year three, and uh, the anticipation probably has never been higher. Uh, there's a, a benchmark, if you will, a standard uh, that we set that now put us in position uh, to go for those goals. You know, back-to-back -back years where you qualified in, in two years and was able to move on in one, and this year to really put yourself in position to take that ne that next step in year three. And so, uh, hopefully, we could. Uh, reap those benefits now. Frank, do you sense just being around the players that there's a, throughout the summer, the guys that I talked to said they have this, hey, you know, we're, we're driven by the fact that yeah. we didn't get, we won six games last year, we didn't get yeah. uh, selected to go to a bowl. Uh, obviously they said, hey, it's on them, we should have yeah. won more right. games and stuff, right. but they don't say, they say they don't want to feel like that again. I mean, yeah. do you sense that? that, that sense I do, that? I do. Uh, you know, our theme this year is uh, uh, start fast, finish strong. And uh, in years in the past, we've wanted to, to start well, and other years we've said finish. Uh, but to go from beginning to end is what we tr uh, unique, we're going to try to get done this year, not just at the back end to come on and play well or, or to start fast, um, but to play a complete game uh, from the beginning until the end, 60 minutes uh, of getting a job done. How does a coach get a player to play for a full 60 minutes? Uh, I think in practice preparation, you do those things. Uh, the uh, anticipation of, of the moment, it, it's built up. And on the sound or the start of the game with the kickoff, uh, you you start in that manner. A manner that, that demands and that uh, have prepared players to be equipped with starting fast. And then a practice or a game situation where it's consistent and consistency becomes the key to do it play in and play out and not have those laps in between although the reality of a football game you'll have highs and lows to remain constant not to get too high not to get too low but to keep yourself poised in position to finish a job at hand but you won six games last year six games the year before yeah. uh is there another difference because it looked like last year to lose five games like about 31 points yeah uh Six games isn't enough. Uh, that's the standard. That's the benchmark. We're beyond that. We're beyond, uh, you know, we became bowl eligible. We won six games. That won't get it anymore. And that's something we've placed upon ourselves. Um, and then those games, as you alluded to, in the fourth quarter, there were several of them uh, that were in the balance in the fourth quarter, all of them, to be quite honest with you, where none was more than a 14-point uh, lead or behind at any point. Uh, of the season, so we played. Uh, we played good, but right now, good isn't good enough for us. Uh, we have to play better to win those games. Uh, Frank, what, uh, what, uh, as far as how confident are you, yeah. uh, even with, without a quarterback in there that's settled, uh, to get the offense jump started again? You know, yeah. you only scored six points the last two games. Obviously, new offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. How, how, how are your feelings with the offense going in? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm confident in this team. I'm confident in our personnel. Uh, there's work that needs to be adhered to because. We're not an offensive unit that have played together. And so there's some cohesiveness, some chemistry that needs to, uh, to bear itself. Uh, and, and we'll spend this month doing that in preparation uh, for the kickoff. And then to continue to do that for 11 uh, weeks in a row beyond that. How's the transition going with the new defensive coordinator coming yeah. in from? Yeah, it's been really good. Uh, our players have taken to him. Uh, as you know, he was an integral part of what we were doing in our first two seasons here. Uh, he steps up, a guy that is fully capable of doing a great job for us and uh, have put us in position to be able to play well. We, we have a veteran group over there that we have expectations for, uh, minus a first rounder and some other guys that played significant roles. But uh, in totality of a defense, uh, you know, a unit that's played a lot of snaps from a personnel standpoint. Frank, you got four quarterbacks lined for the starting row. Just what are your expectations out of those four guys to start camp? To have all four of them prepared to be the starter uh, in case it happens. Uh, to, to go out and fill the team that don't have reservations about what we're doing because uh, we're worried about if that guy goes down, the next may not be capable a year ago. Uh, we had some transition or attrition, should I say, at the quarterback position. And so Dalton was was the veteran player, and we had two true freshmen behind him. And uh, we were on pins and needles and didn't want to lose him. 
And so you're always conscientious of those things. And uh, I think right now we have enough personnel that we can build not only a starter, but quality depth at that position group to allow us to go out and play fearless. You brought up Dalton. I, I'm just wondering <coughs> what your thoughts on him is as he's playing in Cowboys camp right yeah. now and, and trying to make that roster spot. Yeah, excited for him. He was here a week ago training with our, our team uh, and just hanging out with the guys, came to Top Golf to our team building event and uh, just good to see him. So happy for him, so deserving of a young man who overcome a lot of adversity, who's very talented and uh, his hard work have put him in position uh, to achieve and hopefully he could make that team and be a contributor uh, in years to come for the Cowboys. Frank, how important is it for that defense? Uh, defense played real well last year throughout the season. How important is it for them to come out strong, come out hard, fast, because of the offense going to take a little time maybe to come yeah. together? You know, I think uh, from a team approach with a team that's very conscientious of one another, we don't go out and, uh, and play football irregardless to the other unit. I think some of the success we had as a defense a year ago was a direct complement of what we did as an offense and, and, man, and clock management and the things that we did in number of snaps. I mean, there were several games we played. The defense played less than 50, 60 snaps. That's unheard of in today's football. And that attribute to us having the success that we had in some capacity. Uh, you know, I expect that defense to be able to play well. I expect our offense, our special teams, uh, to be responsible to one another and the things that we're doing. Uh, but we'll be uh, a much more aggressive offense in, in this year, uh, in this season. From the day you came in to where you are now, just how has this program evolved under your watch? Yeah, I, I think, you know, what we spoke about earlier, we, we talk about six, win, six wins, and two years ago, three years ago, that was excitement. Yeah. You know, your bowl loves when you get six. Um, that's not good enough anymore. I think the standard uh, is higher, uh, which is a beautiful thing, and, and we wouldn't want it any other way. Um, I think the, the brand of ball we play, the style of ball we play, the type of personnel that we're getting uh, here now allows us uh, to reach for the stars and, and to want to wanna take that next step. Uh, so excited about the direction of our program. How about the division race, West Division race? How do you look, how do you how do you see it yeah. shaping up? Uh, UTSA against everybody. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, those guys in, in each one of their programs respectively are going to do the things necessary for them uh, to be in position to win football games. Uh, you know, we'll deal with that at, at the time it comes. I think it's a very uh, competitive conference. I think it's a well-coached conference. And I think it's a very talented conference from top to bottom. Uh, you look at, you know, some of the guys in this staff uh, in this conference right now, uh, whether you're talking about, you know, FIU, FAU, uh, uh, Louisiana Tech, Middle Tennessee, you got some of the best and brightest minds in college football in this conference right now that have coached at the National Football League and every in Power Five schools as well. So, uh, a well-coached conference, a very disciplined, talented conference, uh, and we're, uh, we're we're right in the middle of it, okay. and uh, we're ready to, to compete. Frank, the preseason media poll had you guys picked pretty low in the West yeah. Division. Is that bulletin board material for your team? Uh, I think it's fair. I think it's fair when you see uh, a year ago in our inability to finish games. Um, you know, I wouldn't pick us number one based on what we did last year. Uh, it's probably fitting, and it's it's our job to go out and, and play the game to control our own destiny. And so, yeah. So speaking of coaching, uh, Offensively, what can UTSA fans are, are they going or, or the change is going to be more subtle? Are you going to be more multiple? You know, with the new OC or what's is there going to will fans be able to tell the difference? Uh, in certain yeah, we're going to do exactly every everything. play we did last year. Uh, the same, yeah, the same. <laughs> yeah, you know uh, what I mean. Gonna, <laughs> no, no pun intended no. at you. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> just don't want to give the world what we're doing. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be exciting. We'll, we'll do some things that are different. We're going to be more multiple. I guess uh, that's what I was trying to get to be more multiple. Yeah, we'll yeah. be exciting. We'll, we'll do some things that uh, that that people uh, will be entertaining and people will like the style of ball that we're playing. Um, uh, you obviously have the players living on campus right now. Do coaches yeah. live on campus? Um, young coaches. Young yeah. coaches. Oh, okay, okay. If yeah. you had to pick like a, a player that you think would be the best roommate or the worst roommate, who would it be? Just the no best roommate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, Out of all of the guys, probably Blaze Moorhead. Oh really? Yeah. Interesting. Why is that? 
Uh, he's probably the neatest. Okay. And he's a very mature young man he's and responsible. Very nice. He's the worst. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the polar opposite of that? <laughs> uh, the the worst would probably one of our, our young offensive linemen. Oh, okay. Who doesn't understand neatness or mm -hmm. etiquette, you know, things <laughs> of that nature. Yeah, they got some things to learn and you know, I'm, I'm kind of a neat guy. Okay. You know, I don't like slopping. Sometimes uh, some of those guys can be a little sloppy. <laughs> yeah.